Baxter um, for our weekly Bible Bible class. Usually I, I record this on you um, on just on the phone and then I upload it to YouTube and then I send it via text to whomever and and share it like that. But I'm trying something different today. Today I thought I would um, go ahead and um, post directly to Facebook on Facebook Live and then um, I will upload it to YouTube. So I'm going to do it in the reverse today. So today we're talking about the tale of two goats. <laughs> and so I have here two little goats. And what of it? Well, we're going to study today about the Day of Atonement. We've been talking about the Feast of the Lord. Last week we talked about the Feast of Trumpets and how that pointed to um, the rapture and that the king is coming. And so today, though, is the Day of, of Atonement. Actually, it starts this evening, and it go, um, so the actual day is, is tomorrow. But let's go ahead and open in prayer, and then I'll tell you about my goats. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day that you've given us. Thank you for all of your blessings. I thank you that you sent Jesus to be the atonement for our sins. And I, I pray that as we go through this Bible lesson, that someone will be encouraged to follow closer to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and I'm going to bring this PowerPoint up and I might need to get up and make an adjustment. So just be patient. <laughs> okay, so I hope that everybody can see my PowerPoint. Yes. Okay. So the tale of two goats. We're going to first of all open up our Bibles to Leviticus um, 16, um, verse 5 and 7 to 10. So I'm, I think it's kind of small. You might not be able to read it on there, but um, I will read it from the scripture and uh, let you follow along in, in your Bibles if you have it. Leviticus, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus 16. Starting in verse 5, we're going to find out all about our goats. All right. It says, And he, is referring to Aaron as the high priest, shall take from the congregation of the children of Israel two kids of the goats as a sin offering and one ram as a burnt offering. And then it goes on to talk about um, a bull being offered for a sin offering. He shall take the two goats, and, and verse starting again in verse 7, he shall take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. And look into this in detail. Then Aaron shall cast lots for the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat. So they had probably like, like uh, a pair of little stones. One said for the Lord and the other didn't say anything. They um, mix them up in a bag, take them out in their hands and put one over each. Put one over each goat, and I'll show you that in, in this uh, presentation in a minute. Um, and Aaron shall bring the, um, the goat on which the Lord's lot fell and offer it as a sin offering, but the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to make atonement upon it and let it go as a scapegoat into the wilderness. Okay, now one more scripture. And this is in Leviticus 16, jumping over to verse 20, up to 22. And it says, And when he has made an end of atoning for the holy place, the tabernacle of meeting on the altar, he shall bring the live goat. Aaron shall lay both his hands on the head of the live goat, confess over it all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions concerning all their sins, putting them on the head of the goat, and shall send it away into the wilderness by the hand of a suitable man. The goat shall bear on itself all their iniquities to an uninhabited land, and it shall, and he shall release the goat in the wilderness. Okay, so now let's get into the details here. So here you see that we have two goats. I don't know if they're as cute as these goats, but anyway, two goats. And they're supposed to be um, pretty much identical. Okay, the scripture doesn't actually say that. It just says two kid goats. But I, I think that um, that's what they were making sure that they were pretty much the same. Okay, then the high priest would cast lots on the goats, like I told you. So we have one of them is for Yahweh and the other is to be the scapegoat. And what does that mean? Well, let's find out. 
Okay, the one for Yahweh is sacrifice. It's put on that altar, the brazen altar, and it's sacrificed. And then the, um, the high priest takes the blood and puts the blood on the mercy seat on the, um, on the Ark of the Covenant. That's where God dwells. And so in doing so, he made atonement or he covered the sins of the people of the nation and of the nation. So um, that's why he did it. And then once he had done that, now um, we have to go see about the other goat. And so here we have the other goat and it's going to be the scapegoat. Here you see a picture of the tabernacle and the front doors of it. And he was, they were to bring both of the goats there. And we've already talked about that. And then the um, the high priest would lay both of his both of his hands on the head of the scapegoat, and he would confess all their sins. And he would say, "We have been rebellious. We have worshipped other gods. We have um, been disobedient to God's word." And he would confess all the sins of the nation and of the people on the head of that goat. And then a suitable man would be found to lead the goat away. Now, by the time of Christ, what they were doing is, oops, it, it didn't move. Okay, there we go. There's the suitable man to lead the scapegoat away. And they would use um, a red cord that um, I read in one place wrapped around the, the horns, um, maybe around the neck, but they'd cut off the end of it and notice they would hang it on the door of the temple because by the time in Jesus' time, they didn't have a tabernacle anymore. They had a temple. And so they would hang it there, and then, and then um, the guy would um, take the goat out. Now, by Jesus' time, they didn't just they didn't release the goat to be free in the wilderness. They actually took it twelve miles out and pushed it over a cliff. So that wasn't so nice for the goat. But anyway, he was taken out there, and once once they had taken care of these these duties then a miracle happened. And what happened was that that red or that scarlet cord that was hanging on the door would turn white. And that happened every year on the Day of Atonement. And that would prove to them that the Lord had accepted their, um, that the Lord had accepted their uh, sacrifice and that um, he had forgiven um, the sins of the people for that year. So why two goats? Well, the first goat that was sacrificed to Yahweh covered or atoned for the sins and transgressions of the people. This brought forgiveness of their sins for that year. The other goat, the scapegoat, carried the sins away. In essence, it took away the guilt of their sins. So the change of color was a visual demonstration of Isaiah 1.18 which says, Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be, though they are as crim crimson, they shall be as wool. And so that was a visual demonstration, and it was a miracle that happened every single year. Okay, so um, then we had a problem. It says, Why didn't God accept their sacrifices anymore? Well, it says, well, it, this is not written about in the Bible because, um, well, it's not because, but it is in the rabbinical um, records. So uh, every year the rabbis would write different interesting things that would happen throughout the year. And so it, it has there as a historical fact that for 40 years before the destruction of the temple in 70 AD, the cord would not change color. And they were astonished. They knew something was wrong, but they didn't know what. And they didn't make the connection. Well, the temple was destroyed in 70 AD. And if you subtract 40 years from that, that's 30 AD. And that would have been about the time that Jesus died on the cross. But Jesus died on Passover. And then um, the Day of Atonement happened um, six months later. So they didn't make the connection. And God gave them 40 years to figure it out. 40 is the number of judgment. Remember, they had 40 years in the wilderness and and um, Nineveh had 40 days to repent. Well, they, they were given 40 years to figure it out and repent, but they didn't get it. They didn't understand that the leaders of the nation didn't get it. And so God shut the thing down. He allowed the Romans to 
to overrun the nation and destroy the temple. So this was repeated annually. That means every year for 1,500 years. And then Jesus came. And he lived his perfect life. And then he died as our sacrifice, as our atonement on the cross. And so because he shed his blood there, then they didn't need to shed the blood of the two little goats, uh, of well, the one goat anymore. But they kept on doing it. So let's see what happened just before the crucifixion. Um, so I know this doesn't look like Pilate, but we're going to use him to represent Pilate because he has two hands there. And I don't really like putting up pictures of Jesus because we don't really know what he looks like. So this quasi stick figure is going to represent Jesus. And so Jesus Christ, he is the son of the father. That's one of his titles. Well, Pilate, if you recall, um, in Matthew 27, so, well, it, well I, I should come back to this, but, um, so the, and this is Barabbas. If you remember, Pilate presented in Matthew 27, he presented Jesus because he knew they were going to, wanting to um, have him crucified because they were envious of him. And he presented Barabbas, who was, um, a, a convicted criminal but notice how they were alike they shared the same name Barabbas it means son of the father Bar means son Abbas means father so this man this convicted criminal had the same name as Jesus at the same title and if you um, remember in, in Philippians 2, it says that Jesus, that Jesus came and he came in the likeness of man. And so these two were presented. The governor answered and said, which of the two do you want me to release to you? And they said, Barabbas. And Pilate said to them, what then shall I do with Jesus who is called Christ? And they all said to him, let him be crucified. So right here, what we have is the lots. So the lots fell as of old, but no one recognized it. They didn't, they didn't get it. They didn't see that the one for the Lord, was, was, that the choice was given to the people and the people called out that they chose Barabbas for the people. They chose Barabbas and they chose Jesus for the Lord to go to be crucified. In other words, to be um, slain on the altar. And so the lot was there. They just didn't, they didn't recognize it. So Jesus Christ, our Yeshua Messiah, he was chosen for the sacrifice as the perfect lamb of God. He said, um, it says in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, I don't know if you can see it there. I wrote it a little bit small. He made him Jesus. He, God the Father, made him Jesus, who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So that day on the cross, his blood was shed, just like the blood of the first goat was shed for their sins. Jesus was shed. Jesus' blood was shed for our sins. Now, what about the scapegoat? Well, Barabbas, he, was, he had already been convicted and he was set free. Now, that's how it was supposed to be with the scapegoat. That he was supposed to be just take the scapegoat was to be taken out into the wilderness and allowed to go free. Um, so like Barabbas, we have already been convicted of our sins. And because of Jesus, we have been set free. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And then it says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so um, we see the, the effect of the lot that they performed it but they didn't recognize that they had what they had done. And it was there. Everything that God told them to do in the Old Testament to um, for these sacrifices, Jesus, um, he fulfilled it. And that means he, he, clear, he um, verified it and he was the demonstration of that. And we see this here. So now in Jesus Christ alone, we can find forgiveness from sin as represented by the first goat and freedom from guilt as 
represented by the second goat. And so um, in Hebrews in Hebrews 10, 1 through 18, you can read the whole thing and study it up on your own, but and let me just read a couple of verses of it before we, we close, because that was the, the point that I wanted you to understand. So Hebrews 10, um, we, I'm not going to read all 18 verses, I don't think. It says, For the law, having a shadow of the good things to come, and not the very image of the things of the things can never with these same sacrifices which they offer continually year by year make those who approach perfect. So they every year they did this thing with the goats and it didn't make anybody perfect. It didn't make anybody better. But for those whose heart was repentant, they were forgiven for that year. And so, um, so in verse 5 it says, Therefore when he came into the world, he said, um, sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you had no pleasure. God had no pleasure in those things because the people weren't doing it from the heart. The people were doing it. Um, let, uh, let me go ahead and see if I can get into the picture now. I don't know if I'm there. Um, but anyway, I, I'm trying to be there. So I want... Um, so, no, God said he didn't have pleasure in their sacrifices because of the fact that um, they, did, they just were going through the motions, but their heart wasn't there. And they, they didn't really mean it. They were going through the motions and doing what God had commanded them to do because they thought that that would um, get them um, uh, favor with God because they were doing what they were told. But their heart but then they go away from doing their sacrifices and they go in and still continue in their sins and so um we do this today we come to church we sing our songs we worship the lord we listen to the preacher we say yes amen yes i agree but we go home and we don't change our lives we don't do anything different so so even though jesus has died to pay the penalty for all of our sins and to take away all of our guilt um we are not we're not appropriating that just like they didn't. And so um, Jesus says, behold, I have come. And then I said, behold, I have come in the volume of the book. It is written to do your will, O God. So Jesus said, they didn't get it. They, it, it meant nothing. So now I'm coming to do your will. I'm coming to do what the goat, the blood of the goats and all those didn't. Um, so, uh, the the point to hear is that Jesus came to fulfill that. Um, in verse 14, it says, For by one offering he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. And so Jesus, as as we are growing in grace, he is perfecting us because he, and the blood that he shed when he rose when he ascended upon heaven, up to heaven, um, right after he, he resurrected from the dead. He went and presented himself, and he presented the blood that he shed in the uh, at the altar in heaven. So the tabernacle and the temple that were built were built as models of the temple in heaven. And so he presented it there once for all. So my challenge is this. Um, are you in the Lord? Have you repented of your sins and trusted him as Savior? Only through the shed blood of Jesus Christ on the cross can you be can you be free. Maybe you are saved, but you have strayed from the ways of God. Now is the time to make things right with him. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So now we don't have to sacrifice goats. We don't have to sacrifice lambs. Jesus came and he paid the price so that we could have both forgiveness of sins and cleansing of our guilt and shame. And we saw through this, God is faithful to all of his promises. Now tomorrow is the day of atonement. So, so in today, tomorrow, make it a point to spend some time with the Lord, maybe even fasting, asking God to show you in what, what you can do to continue growing and to become more like him. Let's close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for your, your love, your grace, your mercy. I thank you for sending Jesus Christ to die on the cross. I thank you that his blood 
um, did not just atone or cover my sin, but it took it away completely. And I thank you that what was red as crimson, you have made as white as snow. Father, I thank you for it, and I pray that anybody listening that does not know you as Savior would receive you today. And Father, those that uh, of us that know you, I pray that you will draw us closer to you and that you will show us um, how to be more and more like you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, goodbye. We'll see you next time.